MMA fight club, MMA fight. Up next, we got a flyweight bout between Brandon Roy Val, the American fighter, and Rogerio Bontarin from Brazil. Bontarin is 17 and 3 overall, 3 and 2 in his last 5 fights, 29 years old, 5 foot 5 in height with 67 inch reach. He trains out of Gael Ribeiro team. As for Roy Val, he's 12 and 6 overall. He goes by Raw Dog, 3 and 2 in his last 5 fights, hails out of Littleton, Colorado, 29 years old. So same age, both fighters, 5 foot 9 in height. Four inch height advantage over Bontarin. And he's got a 70 and a half inch reach. So about four inch reach advantage as well over Bontarin. He's training at a factory X Muay Thai. So excellent gym there for Brandon Roy Val. Looking at the Tapology public votes, they're coming in the side of Brandon Roy Val with 85% of the votes coming for Roy Val, only 15% coming for Bontarin. That surprises me. Um, at first glance, I did think Brandon Roy Val was kind of the better fighter. But when you start looking at film, both these guys exude moments or show moments in fights where basically their their fighter IQ is not the best or decision making is not the best. In the case of, for example, Roy Val, he could be winning a round and then he'll do something at the end of the round and lose the fight. Um, Rogério Bontarin as well has done the same thing where he's winning a fight, winning a round and loses at the very end of a round, gets knocked out. So both fighters have shown questionable fighter IQ. I'm not going to wager very much in this fight either way. I'm going to give you my advice. I'm going to give you the breakdown. But I'm going to tell you, this is a fight where it's more or less of a coin flip. The money line suggests that. Minus 160 for Roy Val, plus 140 for Rogero Bontarin. If it's a coin flip, you know, mathematically, take the plus money, right? Um, but I don't feel comfortable either side. I don't have a good feel, even for the fight going the distance or not going the distance. We'll talk about that at the end of this breakdown. But I'm not sure which way it goes. Now, break down the, the striking numbers here. For Roy Val, he's landing 3.44 strikes per minute, absorbing 2.98. So pretty good ratio for Bontarin landing 2.82 strikes per minute, absorbing 3.41. Clearly, Bontarin is not an efficient striker. He's landing, he's landing about three strikes per minute, absorbing almost three and a half strikes per minute. So not good output, not good ratio. Roy Val should be the better striker on the feet. He should win the fight on the feet when the fight is on the feet. Now, looking at takedown offense, surprisingly, Bontarin is only averaging 1.68 takedowns per 15 minutes compared to 1.16 for Roy Val. When you watch Bontarin fight, He's an excellent wrestler. He needs to wrestle more. He can win fights. He can win rounds with his wrestling. I expect him to try to wrestle Roy Val to the ground. Now, granted, Roy Val is an excellent submission artist, so I imagine Bontarin will have to be aware of that. But Bontarin cannot win this fight on the feet. If the fight's strictly on the feet, the numbers tell you right there they don't lie. Bontarin does not have good output versus input. Brandon Roy Val is more efficient. He's a pretty good striker, and he's got more output. Now, for takedown defense, they're both the same, about 50%. Looking at the uh, notes I have on both fighters here. So for Roy Val, let's start off with him first. 5-2 and two in LFA before signing with UFC, 2-2 two and two right now in the UFC. His biggest wins were against Kai Car France, which that win is a great win. Round 2 submission, 2020. He also beat Jerome Rivera back in 2018, uh, back in LFA, where you're round 1 TKO. Uh, Rivera is currently a UFC fighter. So, for notable opponents, he lost to Brendan Moreno. That was a weird fight. The link's in the description to watch that fight if you want to check it out yourself. Round 1, pretty quick. Um, he suffers some kind of a weird shoulder injury. You can't tell that he dislocated his shoulder. Something happened. He pulled something, some kind of a muscle issue because he was in a situation where they're both on the ground. Next thing you know, he's grabbing his arm. So weird loss there, but he did fight Brandon Moreno. He also lost round two rear naked choke to Alexandra Pantoja. That, that, that's a fight you got to look at if you're looking to really break this down yourself. He loses that fight, and he was winning every part of that fight up into that moment. So he was winning round one, or he won round one, excuse me. He was winning every part of round two. He was in positions where he was in control position, where he was in top or in, in, in a position of control while he had the clinch going, and then just makes a silly decision, ends up giving up his back. He's on the ground, plenty of time to get out of that position, ends up getting rear naked choked in round two by Pantoja. So a fight he should have won, a fight he lost because of poor decision making and poor technique on the ground. He also lost against Casey Kenny back in 2018 in LFA by decision. So those are his most notable opponents. The things I liked about Roy Val... He's very quick, variety of strikes, kicking, punching, um, has some power in his hands, has, win, has wins over multiple guys who are in the UFC. His finish rate is pretty good, especially by submission. So, for example, his last four wins have all been via submission, okay? He's got nine submission wins out of his 12 total career wins. So, the guy is a submission master. He'll chase, he'll chase heel hooks. He'll chase leg locks. He'll chase anything. Um, and that's his game plan. You know, he's looking to try, try to submit the guy he's going against. Now, the concerns I have with Roval. He's coming off of back-to-back -back losses. One of those is an injury loss against Moreno. That's fine. The other one was a submission loss. His durability to me is definitely in question right now. If he suffers a bad loss here, gets finished, durability may be a problem for him. So here's a guy who, in his 16 prior fights, up until you know the last few fights, he was doing well. He had not been finished. Now he's been finished in his last two fights. So kind of interesting how he goes 16 fights, shows good durability, doesn't get finished. Now his last two fights gets finished, whether it's an injury or whatever else. Durability has to be a question. 
Very poor takedown defense in the case of Brandon Royval. It says 52% takedown defense. If a guy who really wants to wrestle him to the ground wrestles him, they will take him down. He does not very does not defend takedowns very well. And then his submission defense is not great either, a la what happened against Pantoja. So he had opportunities to get out of that submission attempt by Pantoja, just did not do a good job, kept putting himself in danger, gave up his back multiple times before that. Um, so it doesn't do well against submission attempts. He's got poor fighter IQ. In that Pantoja fight, I want to double down and explain, like, he was winning the fight, okay? He was winning. He won all around one. Round two is going well. It's going his way, and he just makes poor decisions. He doesn't have to work in the clinch. Doesn't have to be on the ground. Makes a decision to play that game with a guy who's dangerous in that, in that area. And so, you know, I just question again his decision-making, his fighter IQ. He's coming off of two straight losses. He's going to be pressing in this fight. Not good conditions for a fighter to come into uh, to a match. So, now as for Rogerio Bontarin. He won a Dana White Contender Series back in 2018. He won via standing guillotine choke, which is pretty impressive. Uh, he won the first two UFC fights, so now he's dropped a few now, but he was 2-0 in the UFC at one point. He likes to wear his opponents, opponents down in close range. He doesn't want to work from a distance. Working close, bring him to the ground, use his takedown, use some ground and pound, dirty boxing. He doesn't have great reach. Obviously, it makes sense. Shorten the fight, work in the clinch, right? His most notable opponent, he fought Kai Kara France. So they both fought Kai Kara France. But he lost round one via TKO. Interesting tidbit about that fight. He was winning all of round one. He'd wrestled Kaikara France to the ground. He had position control. Landed some nice strikes in the feet. And then with five seconds to go in round one, Kaikara France clocks him with a really beautiful you know, punch. And just that's it. It's a one-punch deal. Weird situation there at the end. It was like, confusing as to whether the fight was over or not. But the point is, he won that round up until that very moment. So it wasn't a great loss by any means. And if you're just doing MMA math... You know, Kai Kara France uh, lost against Roy Val, but uh, he won against Bontarine. So, the biggest wins of his career, um, and that's for Bontarine. He beat Matt Schnell via decision 2021 and Rowlin Paeva via Dr. Stoppage due to a cut 2020. So, not big time names, hasn't really been tested himself. That's Bontarine. The things I like about Bontarine, <coughs> excuse me, excellent takedown offense and wrestling when he uses it. 1.68 takedowns per fight. Is not enough for a guy who's not a good striker. He needs to work more in his wrestling because it's really good when he uses it. High winning percentage. He's got a 17-3 record, you know, so he's winning at a high clip. He's only lost back-to-back -back fights one time in his career. He's got a solid finish rate. He's won four of his last six wins have been by submission or, or TKO of some kind. Most of his record in his early part of his career, though, was against very low-level fighters. So 17-3, yeah, it's more like 7-3. You know, those first 10, 10 opponents or so just were not very quality fighters. He was 14 and 1 before joining the UFC. So that's notable to kind of consider, right? So he's 17 and 3 now. He was 14 and 1. Jumps up to the UFC, all of a sudden starts notching some losses. He's 1 and 2 in his last three fights. He decided to trade with Kai Kara France. If he decides to trade with Brandon Roy Val, even for just five seconds, he can get clipped and get knocked out. That's what happened against Kai Kara France. Roy Val is a pretty good damn striker. He does a variety of stuff. Rogero Bontarine doesn't have the best stand up defense either. So if he stays disciplined, wrestles Brandon Roval, that's a path of victory. If he tries to trade with him like he did with Kaikara France, he can end up with the same result. The film links that you'll find in the description for the fights to be watched to do this breakdown were Roval versus Pantoja 2021, Roval versus Moreno 2020, Bontarine versus Chanel in 2021, and Bontarine versus Kaikara France 2021. So watch those fights at your leisure. Just a little final comparison here, the two fighters here. Roival and Bontarine, in my, in my opinion, have ex ex like pretty much exact same experience, all right? Four UFC fights versus five UFC fights, you know, 20, 20 total fights versus 18 total fights. Experience-wise, they're very, very similar. Fighter IQ, they both have done things in the octagon that are just very glaring issues. So I'm giving them both a two and a half out of five, um, maybe more more down to a two. I don't want to be disrespectful, but they got to shore up their decision-making. Have to stop losing fights when you're winning the fight. You know, that's just a really poor, you know, it's an example of just poor decision-making in the octagon. Cardio, about the same. They've both seemed to function pretty well in round three, so I'm giving them both the same grade in cardio. Finishing ability, about the same. You know, you've got guys like, you know, they've had some finishes in their in their, in their past, but for Roy Val, I see him slowing down a little bit. Competition's getting a little bit tougher. For Bontarine, the same thing. This fight is not supposed to go the distance according to the bookies. The bookies have it at minus 205 for the, for the fight, finishing under three rounds. I guess that could happen, either because Roy Val submits Bontarine or knocks Bontarine out. Or because Bontarin, you know, submits Roy Val, something of that nature. So that minus 205, I guess, makes sense. But I don't feel great about that position either. It's my favorite prop bet for this fight. Now, boxing-wise, slight advantage there for Roy Val. He's cleaner, throws more strikes, more variety of strikes. 
And then the grappling advantage, I'm going to give that to Roy Val as well. He's more dangerous with submissions. Obviously, you talked about nine submissions in his 12 wins. So he's, you know, very good in that area. It should be noted, Factory X Muay Thai is an excellent gym. Gal Ribeiro team is also very good. So both guys are coming out of very good training camps, very good coaching, uh, very good partners. This is a tough fight, guys. I'm not sure where I'm going to end up landing when the final you know, window closes with this. I think I'm leaning towards Rogerio Bontarine. The plus money may be a factor, even though it shouldn't really be a factor. I just think that with Brandon Royval coming off of the injury loss to Brandon Moreno, right? Um, you know, that didn't look good. I'm, I'm wondering, again, like, you know, some guys can be very talented. They're just a little fragile, right? That just happens. And so is Brandon Royval fragile? Um, is he showing signs of durability issues? Rogerio Bontarine is built like a, you know, like a, a fire hydrant, man. He's, he's thick. He's shorter. He's got pretty good durability. The chin is maybe a question with him, too. So just a lot up in the air with this fight. You're going to probably end up with a pass for me. I'm not going to bet the fight straight up for the money line. I'll do maybe some kind of parlay where I'll put, um, you know, Roy Val or, or Bontarine both back-to-back, flip them. They just have no confidence in this, in this uh, actual fight. So I'll watch it. I'll be very curious. I'm looking for who makes the better decisions. But I'm going to side ever so slightly with Ruggiero Bontarin, uh, the, the the fighter, to win the fight here. But it's going to be close, guys. Good luck with this fight if you're wagering on it. Uh, maybe you know more than I do. Leave some comments. Give me some advice on what you think is going to happen with this fight. Who's going to win? All right, guys. Good luck with this one.